Welcome, health enthusiasts. You're tuned into Health Unabashed on Healthcare Now Radio, your one stop shop for all things health, wellness, and innovation. We're here to shake up the status quo in health, making it sustainable, equitable, and oh so patient centric. I'm Greg Masters, your co host and executive producer, and I'm joined by the digital health aficionado himself, author, global thought leader, and might I add, in his executive role, steward servant, Gil Bash. Together, we're on a mission to bring you the people, the ideas, and the companies that are not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. On today's menu, Gil chats with Henry Stoneley, head of UK and Netherlands for Health Europe, slated for June 17th through the 20th, 2024, at the RAI, RAI Convention Center in iconic Amsterdam. Health Europe is likely the first non-pay-to-play and actionable conference convener in Europe for all stakeholders in the health innovation space. Since launch in the U.S., health has quickly ascended to go-to event status, with senior executives and entrepreneurs as one in three attendees self-report as CEO or founder level, and two in three are director level or equivalent, and according to health's website, is, quote, bringing the health DNA to Europe via world-class speakers, immersive attendee experiences, incredible networking events and parties, and I can attest to that, and impactful networking programs are all at the heart of health, end quote, excluding my remark. So with no further delay, Gil, the mic is yours. Greg, um, I want to thank you uh, for everything you're doing. Of course, our last shows have really focused on something uh, painfully close to your heart, fragmentation of healthcare. Um, today, we have a very special guest, Henry Stoneley from, from Health Health Europe. Everybody's familiar with health without the vowels um, in the United States. Well, this is a breakthrough conversation because actually we're going to talk about health now moving also into Europe. And this is an important conversation overall because, you know, great close to your heart is, is um, thoughtful access to care. And health has really become, well, Henry will agree or disagree. We'll find out in a few moments. It's sort of become the Davos of our industry. Um, It's one of the few places for those of you who've attended health in the United States, whether it was in Las Vegas or some of the other big locations where where the meeting has gathered. It really has been the stomping ground of every sector of our industry. You've got payers there. You've got patient advocates there. You've got product innovators there from across the the ecosystem, biotech companies, pharmaceutical companies, digital health companies, uh, medical device companies. You have policymakers stepping up to the main stage. and, um, And most certainly, you've got some of the largest provider systems in the United States, um, names we hear about every day, Vanderbilt and Mayo and all of these mega health centers all sitting up there together discussing what's going on. You've got a humongous exhibit hall at Health. And it's a pavilion unto itself, like a world's fair of, of innovation and ideas. And obviously, you've got scores, thousands of people walking the hallways, networking. So we know health in the United States quite well. We're about to be acquainted to health in Europe. Henry is really one of the leads of the organization. He's heading up, obviously, all operations in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. Um, He's really collaborating with his colleagues throughout Europe. Henry, welcome to the program. We've known each other for a bit. Is I guess this is the first time we're sort of switching switching roles somewhat. You now I I've got the opportunity to chat with you on something that I think the industry and all of our colleagues want to hear about. Welcome. It's lovely to be here, Gil. And yeah, it's uh, it's very unusual to be in this scenario. I usually take the the Greg role uh, when we've spoken before, so it's great to be great to be a guest. Well, I'm I'm thrilled to have you. You know, uh, you know, I just wanted to sort of dive in a little bit about the thinking process of health. Health. Health has really been seen as as a mega meeting. Um, it's now taking over the globe. And it's probably the only industry-wide forum that attracts everyone throughout the health ecosystem. And um, I wanted to get the background a little bit about why Health Europe. I mean, I, I can give you my thoughts, but I want to get it directly from the leadership. Sure. So there's a few reasons. Um, 
what you just mentioned about getting everyone in one place is it's deliberate. It's not not by accident, but by design. We have we have sort of two really central core beliefs. One is that in order to get the best possible content, the most incredible agenda and the most progressive talks, you have to have a separation of, of church and state, we refer to it as. So you can't pay to play the health. There's no way of sponsoring the event to such an extent that you get yourself onto the main stage. And that means that we can do two things. One is find these people that we like to call coiled springs internally, these people with huge, incredible potential who've never had that opportunity to get up on stage, to talk in a panel, to moderate. People who have the ability to change healthcare but might not be might not be the kind of person that speaks at every event, that goes to every event. And then if you get those amazing people and you ask them to talk about bland things, that's the worst thing you could do. So we like to ensure that the agenda we put forward is completely fresh, completely new, completely innovative. The word we're using a lot in Europe at the moment to describe it is spicy. I think we'll find a better adjective at some point, but stuff that we all talk about behind closed doors. The things that we talk about when Chatham House Rule is in play, when we think no one's listening, those are the conversations that I believe genuinely progress healthcare. And those are the ones that it's really important to have on stage, out there, being discussed by fantastic people. And I think that that's one of the things that makes us really different. You take amazing people, you give them fascinating things to talk about. And then the final bit is you give them a very... I suppose, thin focus in terms of time frame. We are looking at the next one to three years of healthcare at Health Europe. We love healthcare futurism. We love digital health futurism, talking about AI augmentation and 2040 and what healthcare will look like by the time I get to retirement. But we recognise yeah. the health on fire now and that actually as valuable as those conversations can be, we have to look at an industry that is fundamentally on its knees in lots of Europe. And how we can use I love health. that you said that, Henry. I love that you said that. You know, the uh, the uh, Yogi Berra had a great expression. He said, "The future ain't what it used to be," and, <laughs> um, and it's so wonderful to opine about what is to be. You're never held accountable for what is right now, and you you said something that is really true, um, spicy, edgy, provocative. But how about just real? real talking about the challenges and problems we're facing right now in terms of escalating costs, um, social determinants of health. What is the responsibility of industry to make sure people have access to the best of our innovation and ideas? We're, we're dealing with more and more world of have and have nots. And if we look at the, the US and Europe combined, that's really some of the greatest drivers of health innovation and health ideas. And, some of the biggest problems, of course, that we have in the world. Uh, you know, I'm just curious because Europe has always had a very keen eye. Also, Henry, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, but it's a radio show. I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Um, Europe has always kind of had a had a close eye looking at at uh, Africa, and uh, I'm just curious: will will Health Europe also be a, a sort of a platform where, where you'll be able to invite in people who normally have an haven't spoken, haven't had an opportunity to chat from the main stage from from Africa, for instance. Yeah, we are looking at speakers and having conversations with speakers, moderators, panelists, sponsors from across the globe. The European health market appeals to a number of different people, but it's also waking up to the fact that we can't solve all of our problems from within Europe. The, the pandemic showed many things, but one of the things it showed is that Healthcare doesn't really care about boundaries. It doesn't care about arbitrarily drawn borders. So we are fully inclusive in where we're looking for people. We recognise that there are developing nations that have ideas that have incredible potential across Europe. So there's no, we haven't drawn a sort of a circle around Europe and said, this is the only place we're looking. Certainly it's the main focus, but we're definitely looking across, across the world, really. And some of the talent and the speakers that have come forward from outside of Europe so far, who I can't tell you about yet, I'm sorry, have been phenomenal. <laughs> Oh, shucks. You know, uh, part of what I deal with also is, you know, and I think you deal with is, in many ways, Europe is far more advanced than the United States in terms of, of, of um, health information infrastructure. The expectation that um, the country is providing the benefit of health, not your employer. In the United States, we sort of have, oh, um, let's say 40 some odd percent of, of people who are employed get their health insurance by way of an employer. 40% 
um, get their health insurance by way of either a public system, Medicare, Medicaid, or, or, or they purchase it directly through one of the programs that has been created through Obamacare, Affordable Care Act. And then we have a, we unfortunately still have a percentage of our population that falls between the cracks and, and doesn't have health care. In Europe, it's a totally different scene. In many cases, um, the countries themselves are offering the benefit. People are in health plans for their entire life. The country um, has an expectation that it will create electronic medical records, health information that is accessible throughout the provider system. So you, you, you have different sets of problems. And I'm wondering, will the, the challenges you face in Europe or the opportunities you face in Europe Will that scope out your agenda for the program? And then more importantly, it's a multi-part question, get ready. Um, why should American innovators and business leaders already look to the Health Europe website and say, I need to buy my ticket now um, for Health Europe? It's it, it's equally important. It's a, it's a global forum in Europe, but the conversation is going to be different and I need to be listening in there. So yeah, you're right. They're they're very different systems. Even within Europe, obviously, it's it's totally different how every single different nation runs things. If I was to say why American innovators to go to the end of the question first, uh, if I'm an American innovator and I am looking across at Europe, where we have some of the most clinically validated technology in the world, we tend to produce the UK in particular produces a lot more in the way of clinical validation and studies around health tech, digital health, healthcare um, than a country with the population of ours should um we've got incredible companies and every time i've been involved in a raise for a health tech company in the uk which is my my background everyone has always said you've got to get to the states you have to work out how to scale into american healthcare it's the biggest market and that makes perfect sense but i think that one of the big challenges for european companies going over to the us is knowing where to start it is so much more fragmented as a system by design than European ones are. If I am a, let's say I'm a French health tech company and I want to break into the NHS, there are not clear routes and I've sold into the NHS for years, it's never that clear, but there's an obvious place to start. If I want to go to the Dutch system, I know that actually Dutch health has devolved into the different regions and I can go region by region where I can go at a national level and try and kind of filter down. It's a lot harder, I think, for European health tech companies to go over to the US. There have been some success stories. There are brilliant accelerators. See, the Sinai runs an amazing one that is full of European com uh, companies every year. But people aren't sure where to start. And I think that because we're bringing everyone together, payers, providers, VCs, health tech, government, patient advocacy groups, if you're an American health system and you come to health, there are thousands of people there who want to meet American providers because they know they have technology that translates well across the pond and can be used to help improve patient outcomes, to save lives, to lessen the burden on staff. If I was a provider, knowing that health has a 35% CEO audience, I'm going to meet the people who can help to change my system, to help progress my system. I think it's a fairly unusual offering to have all of those people from across Europe in one place at one time all looking, not all looking, but many of them looking to go over to the US, but not quite sure how to do it. It's the perfect sort of breeding ground for innovation and partnership. Just dropping in, you're right on time for Health Unabashed on Healthcare Now Radio. Today, we're chatting with Henry Stoneley, head of UK and Netherlands for Health Europe, running from June 17th through the 20th, 2024, at the RAI Convention Center in the iconic city of Amsterdam. You know, you, you, you hit on some really critical topics. The United States is most certainly the world's biggest single market, but it is the world's most chaotic market. And we have redundancies of systems. We have different forces at play. If you were to ask the CEOs of health in the U.S. were to have a panel of CEOs from the ecosystem and ask them, how do you think the, the one, the person sitting to your left of you makes money? in the system, they'd be clueless. I, I don't think that a big pharmaceutical company really truly understands how a humongous retail pharmacy chain makes money. I don't think a payer understands how a pharmaceutical company makes money. And and we have we have layers of economic systems that keep on building on each other. The ramification is almost 20% of GDP is spent on health in the United States, and yet people are living 10 years less. 
take a country like France or Germany, Spain, Italy, UK, the major five, they spend, um, well, a little more than half of that same amount of money on health, and they're living 10 years longer in almost every single market. Um, I, I think the United States has a lot to learn from Europe. I, I, I would assume that that because we've always had these global meetings, I, I'm wondering if Europe has gotten the short end of the stick in the conversation, and that everybody says, well, the US is the biggest single market, and US is super powerful. Let's hear what the Americans have to say. Um, but from my experience traveling the world, I sometimes go to some of the smaller markets, Israel, for instance, and I see what they're doing in health, and I realize they're spending a fraction of what we spend in America, and they're living more than 10 years longer. So, I mean, what's your perspective of the of the sort of like the flavor that's going to happen from Health EU? By the way, is it going to be called Health EU or Health Europe? What's health the official Europe. name? Health Europe. So, uh, Health Europe, um, uh, will the tone be set so that the voice of Europe on the global health scene has more dominance? Because I'm wondering if we've focused a little too much on the health of the United States to the detriment of the world's health. What, what's your thoughts? So, I mean, there's there's two parts to that, to this answer, right? So firstly, it, just in terms of pure statistic demographic, about 80%, 75 to 80% of the people attending Health Europe are going to be from Europe. 15, 20% from uh, the US are likely to come over. Uh, and that's at an audience level of at least three and a half thousand, quite probably quite a bit higher. Um, so 15%, 15, 20% from the US, 5% rest of the world, and the rest is going to be Europe. So there is a very European focus. There's a really good reason behind that. Europe's countries are very often highly siloed. We don't do well at talking to one another. There are certain networks that work really well. The Nordic companies are really good at scaling and sharing innovation between them. That works quite nicely because basically because their own national markets are really small. And so they've worked out how to scale nicely across, across the Nordics. Germany has always been good at bringing in healthcare and health tech ideas from other countries. That's always been very positive. Aside from those two areas, the rest of Europe is really siloed. I've, like I said, I've sold into the NHS for years. And one of the most, one of the things that frustrates me the most or frustrated me the most was people going, well, yeah, look, it might work in France, but it's not going to work in the NHS because there was this like default position of no. And the more and more that I work within European healthcare, I realize that's not unique to the UK. That's not unique to the NHS. Healthcare is crying out for innovation for innumerable reasons, whether it's from patient outcomes through to lessening the burden on the workforce. We need innovation in healthcare. I've been so impressed with you know, Germany, I think, setting in for the rest of the world on um, reimbursing physicians for their advice on on remote patient monitoring and digital health solutions. You know, the fact that Germany took a stand on that really became, I think, the benchmark for the world and also looking at what data they wanted to deploy in order to determine reimbursement. You know, we, we have a lot of buzz about digital health and yet, you know, and we have a lot of you know, activity in the States on FDA 510K approval for digital health technologies. But then when it hits the, the payer, the payer says claim denied, insufficient evidence. And, and nobody in the United States is really discussing what is um, sufficient evidence. There is a company, I think, that is is getting it right. You know, um, I think David Klein of Click Therapeutics has been quite vocal about the fact that his category needs to step to the plate and see themselves as biopharmaceutical companies producing real data, not just like 50 patients, it works better, give me the 510k, rather, you no, know, let's produce real peer review data. Um, and I think Europe has appreciated that more and more and more. You know, I, I, I'm going to be bold, not spicy, not spicy, bold, and say, um, I think a lot of folks from the United States have to come to Health Europe, although it's it's specific to Europe and you want the speakers on the platform to really represent the communities you serve. I think American innovators have a ton to learn from the European scene. It's, a, it's in many cases, a price-regulated scene. Um, in many cases, it's a closed-loop system where information goes through the system. In NHS, you need to have a primary care doctor in order to access specialists for the most part. And, and so there are certain things happening in Europe that are in terms of, of making sure that that person who's pre-diabetic has, uh, has the right care. I think what 
you know you 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 know you know the UK system well i think if you're a resident of south london i think nhs does a better um um better on using health information to engage people and i think they understand diversity of population if you have someone who's a uk citizen from from pakistan and doesn't really speak english i think the uk system is much more culturally sensitive to rallying to those people's needs I think the United States has a lot of a lot to learn from Europe, Europe's social determinants of health programs and a lot to learn in terms of remote patient care. So, you know, we, we tend to think in the United States of um, cultural narcissism. I, I think that that Europe has actually put in place a lot of systems that um, improve the quality of care. And maybe that's why life expectancy is longer than Europe. I don't think it's because. You know, you've got nice things to see and the culture is is so cool and the food in France is so much better. Food in the UK could do some improvement, of course. But um, but that said, um, you know, I, I, I want to push you as a, as a leader of Health Europe and so say, are, are we learning from the right sources? Do you think that the Americans should line up and buy, you know, you know passes to Health Europe because they need to sort of not not so much learn about the system but how innovators actually survive in a more regulated environment i think europe is has more gatekeepers i think um, europe france they approve the product and then separately they approve price we don't have that in the united states we're beginning to have that with center for medicare and medicaid beneficiary services in the us um, they're looking at you no know, you no know, drugs, how drugs get in formulary for the Medicare, Medicaid population. But I, I'm wondering, have we in the world, the developed world, dismissed Europe and therefore lost out on learning best practices? And health has always been a place where people tell it as it is from the stage. Um, I, I, can I push back on you a little bit and say, hey, you know, 85, 15 percent. Um, 15 percent from the U.S. Um, you know, maybe it needs to be a bigger audience from the U.S. Not it's still 85, 15 percent, but a lot more people filling the hallways. Yeah, and look, we would absolutely welcome that. Um, we've been pretty conservative when we've looked at what we think the initial audience numbers will be. And in terms of whether people are looking in the wrong place, it's hard to say. Everyone, as you mentioned earlier, like there's a lot of divide between different parts of even very similar industries, you know, commercial pharmacy through to big pharma. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I can say whether healthcare is looking in the wrong places for information. But what I do know is that a big part of Health Europe is welcoming innovation from everywhere in the world. We're going to run sessions on how to get into every single one of the markets that will be with companies that have done it from their own country, companies that have scaled there from the US, from Canada, from wherever in the world. I think it's difficult, like I said, difficult to say outright whether we're looking in the wrong places. But I know that the right place for people to be looking when they are hoping to learn from a European market is the event where all of Europe is attending. I can't think so of a quick question, Chris, question for you. When, where, first of all, when, where? What's the dates? Where? Great question. So June 17th to 20th, 2024. Uh, it's at Rye in Amsterdam. Beautiful, beautiful building right in the heart of Amsterdam. Uh, it runs from the Monday through to the Thursday. It is going to be about three and a half thousand people plus uh, as attendees. We're looking at about 250 plus sponsors, uh, about 300 speakers, a huge amount uh, of topics covered on the agenda, but also going into those quite in depth. We have some pretty exciting uh, after parties lined up because health is reasonably well famed for it. How about the pavilion? The pavilion has always been a high point at, at health in the US. Can we expect the uh, the sort of the same level of pizzazz and energy around the exhibitor pavilion? 100%. There's, there are some amazing plans afoot. And if this wasn't going out in public, I'd be happy to wax lyrical on them. Um, like I said earlier, like we've got, we're going to have amazing speakers. We're going to have an amazing agenda, but you have to make it visually appealing. You have to make something stick in the, in the crawls of people's minds. It has to be something that is exciting and innovative and new because so many European healthcare conferences are not that. And so, yes, it will very much have that feeling that everyone loves from health in Las Vegas. It's not going to be as dark as Las Vegas. Las Vegas has got that very sort of almost nightclub feel to it. Uh, I can't see that appealing too much in Europe. So it's been tailored to fit our core audience, but it will feel and be very much a health event. And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I'm already looking forward to it. I hope everybody listening to our program today 
I heard the dates in June. What are the dates again in June? June 17th to 20th, 2024. 17th to the 20th. Mark that down. I think that uh, if if um, if our program, Health Unabashed on Healthcare Now Radio, could send everyone an Outlook meeting notice, all our, our, our listeners, we would. But in the meantime, you're going to have to list that. I, I think that health has a bar that it has set that is uh, certainly extraordinary and global. I have a feeling that Health Europe will um, will not disappoint. Uh, I think we have great leadership on this. Um, tell me, just in a few moments that we have left, Henry, I would be really thrilled to sort of hear if you could give us any insight in terms of some of the, the big things you expect going into Health Europe for 2024 and coming out of the meeting. In a nutshell, it is going to be the first time that an event has brought together the entire world of European health, like I said, from government to patients, VCs to health tech, payers, providers, life sciences, biotech. What we're expecting is a genuine focus on solving the challenges that healthcare faces now by learning from other countries and learning across borders. We're going to create a scenario where we can actually facilitate change. It's not just a networking thing. It's not just an excuse to show off your wares. This is a genuine change maker. That's what I expect to come out of the back of Health Europe. It's really important. You know, the reality is I think the appetite for conversation um, is huge. I think that sometimes we see um, we get frightened about collaboration and we see it's capitulation. I think that Health Europe is a, is a place of change. Um, I think health has been a place of change where people meet with each other, both in the hallways and behind stage before they go up onto the main stages. I, I expect Health Europe will be no less. I want to salute you, Henry, and the team at Health Europe of making this happen that think it's long and coming. And I think that the the world of health needs a place where the diverse ecosystem can can come, converse, and decide how do we do better for the people we represent. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program. I'm looking forward to tracking you and everything that you're doing on this. And I hope you and Health Europe will keep us posted so that we can share the information out. Congratulations. We need you to succeed. And thank you all for listening in on Healthcare Now Radio, Health Unabashed, and to my executive producer and friend, Greg Masters, as always, thank you, my friend. And that, dear listeners, is the last note for today's melody. A huge thanks to our worldwide listeners for tuning in. For more information or to access on-demand replays of our work, go to healthcarenowradio.com and select Health Unabashed from the Programs tab. We stream live three times a day, Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m., 6.30 p.m. and 2.30 a.m. Eastern, or 7.30 a.m., 3.30 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. Pacific. To keep tabs on Health Europe or to check out the lineup, go to europe.health.com. And as Gil points out, that's health without the vowels. Follow Henry and Health Europe on LinkedIn by searching for Henry Stonely, and that's S-T-O-N-E-L-E-Y, and Health Europe, which is H-L-T-H-E-U-R-O-P-E, -E, respectively. Stay social with Gil and me on Twitter by at Gil underscore Bash, and that's B-A-S-H-G, -E, and Greg Masters, M-P-H, and that's Greg with two Gs, and don't forget to give your tweet some zing with our hashtag health on a bash until we meet again pursue your passion for better health unapologetically